Hi guys, so today I'm going to be running you through how to put together a water maker into a boat. Climb aboard this week with my helper Lou. As we contort ourselves into confined spaces. I've hung around for a bit of trial and error plumbing. This place too long. On board the soon-to-be water-making yacht, All The Stars. G'day, my name's Jesse, and I'm an Aussie sailor, living aboard my 37-year-old Australian-built boat, All The Stars. So join me, and many friends, as we discover the wonders of life at sea. So why not hit that subscribe button? And that way you can stay updated and we can do this adventure together. Hi guys, Jess here on All The Stars. So today I'm really excited. I'm gonna be showing you how to assemble a water maker, which is basically a seawater desalinator. Uh, I've got the Seawater Pro single membrane system and I'm gonna be running it off a 240 pump, um, which is gonna be powered by a generator and or my battery bank at times. So let's get straight into it. Laid out in total chaos. Let's go down into the r and I'll show you. So it's gonna be a bit cozy in here for a second, but um, what you can see here is our filters. These are color pre-filters and a backwash filter. Um, and behind me, I've got the mounting board that I've made up out of a bit of plywood, which has been painted and sealed. And I'm yet to paint that white. Uh, we're just doing a test fit and I've glued on some, some brackets behind here, some timber blocks. Here I am installing my little mounting blocks. And here I've rubbed back some of the fiberglass gel coat. And I got these little blocks, which I'm gonna glue on here. I've glued those blocks in. I've just got little foam blocks, just sort of space there to hold them on with the tape at the bottom. The top, they just tape straight in. So you can see they're thick and epoxy. It's doing its job there. And I've managed to uh, epoxy those on as well. We've screwed them into place. The screws will hold it while the glue goes off. Wait, so I'm just going to screw this panel on so it can come off when it needs to. I've made up a control panel, which is basically just going to have a pressure control valve and my flow rate meter, as well as my total dissolved solids meter, which is a little um, bit of digital kit that measures the amount of dissolved solids in the water, which tells me whether it's safe for drinking or not. Um, so yeah, I'm going to be building in the main membrane onto this backing board and then the filters will go on there as well. And then over here, we have a, um, a shelf that I've beefed up out of pretty solid bit of ply, which has been epoxied. And this will be where I mount the electric motor that's gonna power this whole system. And it's quite a big unit. Just the motor itself weighs 22 kilos. And then the, the pump, which is this little part here, that, um, that's the pressure pump that pumps up to 800, 900 PSI that's going to be a part of that assembly. So it's not a cheap operation. Um, I'm going to um, be honest, it's probably upwards by the time you include a generator, it's about $10,000 investment. So it's not for the faint hearted. Um, the water maker kit itself came from the USA and it set back about five grand. I've since bought a um, generator and there's a few bits and pieces that I've had to buy like a seawater strainer, which didn't come with the kit. Um, and I've run some hose, some tubing from my seacock on the hull up to where we are. Uh, so when you include all these bits and pieces and maybe an inverter, which is what's going to um, power the system off my battery bank, um, the inverter to run this system is a big inverter. That's about a 3000 watt inverter. So that's going to set you back two grand. Okay. So 10 grand, we got a water maker, but that means we can make unlimited amounts of water. So I can have the water freedom to have showers with fresh water. I can top up my fresh water drinking whenever I want. I can use fresh water to rinse my fishing rod, my spear gun. The list goes on, hand washing, things like that. Um, when you've just got a 200 litre tank like I have, you're constantly planning and conserving water. 
and where you're going to go to the next point to fill up. Without further ado, let's get stuck into finishing off this mounting board and then we can get it hung and get all the systems connected. Hey, how's it going? I'm Lou. Yeah, just helping out Jess today on the boat. We've just put together this huge monster of a motor for the water maker. Um, it's great to have your help here, Lou. Um, we've bolted this pressure pump Comet pressure pump onto the electric motor and I think the combined weight of this thing must be close to 30 kilos now. This is why I need help because the two of us are going to wrestle this in in under here in this lazarette uh, position where we've got that shelf. Hopefully the shelf is strong enough we'll find out pretty soon whether it'll hold the weight of it but we get this monster in there and we've got to actually bolt it down with some holes here and we'll mark out our holes and then pre-drill it and then bolt uh, bolt this whole unit down so it can't move. What do you think about that Jess? Pretty big it, hey? Yeah it, it is really striking me how large this thing is. I do think it's probably the better spot like it's the most out of the way spot down here. It's not going to get salt water on it, it's not going to get trampled on. Um, so yeah I'm gonna climb back in and have a fiddle around see whether I can uh, find a nice angle for it to sit in. I try and elongate these holes a little bit just to so it fits. Yeah. Messy bugger. So we um, we have our lift pump, which is a low pressure pump. I've got all the fittings gelled together and as our sea strainer. And this unit is mounted down below the waterline. It's going to pump raw seawater through the primary filter, the sea strainer, and then it'll go up through the other filters to get to our pressure pump, uh, which will then go to our membrane. So um, this little guy has taken quite a bit of work to get lined up. We've built a little backing block in here, and it should look like that when it's all fitted. So I know I can get to the top ones, I just don't know whether I can get to the bottom ones. Two. Oh, it's good for now. Temporary. So that's my mock up here. White is blends in with just about everything else on the boat. <laughs> with our mounting board and parts all painted up shiny white, it was time to put it all together. See what a pressure goes in this end, pressurized hose. And it um, at that end it's gonna that's where it comes out to a gauge to measure the pressure going through the whole system. And then our fresh water, it comes out of here, I think, or was it the other end? I can't remember. It is. Oh, it's either end. I know I can fit those once I'm in there, because that, that's going to be a bit bulky if I put all this together right out here. Because I can screw it, screw it all together while it's sitting in there. This I had to get on with the bolts before we lifted it in, so I might... Uh, Save that bit until we get in there. Yep. We need those to, to mount the actual board. And the moment had finally come where we got to bolt it all together. Now that, we've got our, now that we've got our mounting panel in here, we can start mounting things on it, Lou. Beautiful. We can uh, put one of these filters on. All 316 stainless.
that. This is the back of my control panel. At the front here we'll have our pressure gauge, which is uh, controlling how much flow is coming out of the membrane in pressurized salt water. And we'll be able to monitor the pressure in the uh, membrane and we can adjust the pressure valve to divert salty brine over the side to release pressure. This is our flow rate meter. This will tell us how much fresh water is coming out of the system. And then over here I'm going to have my total dissolved total dissolved solids monitor. And somewhere else I might have to put in a, like an on off switch for the pump. Well, there's that control panel. Um, now I've got to get it up in here and uh, connect it onto these lines. And because it's winter, a lot of these lines are really hard. So I'm going to heat them up with a heat gun, a little u -bit cheap heat gun. Um, soften them up so I can get them on, then I can clamp them on. Then I'm going to basically connect my uh, Brian overboard line, which I still haven't drilled a hole through the hole yet. But just to test run it, just to get water in it, fresh water, I can um, put that into a bucket at that end. I just need to get a fitting. Now this little guy is a rinse timer and you can set that to rinse the system as often as you like and ridding it of salt when it's not in use. Garden hose fitting to get some fresh water into this because my my um, house supply water doesn't uh, doesn't run it. It's not sensitive to pressure, so I have to turn it on manually, which is not going to work. Let me just explain. All Stars has never had a pressure sensing tap, so I had to change this in the galley so that the rinse timer could get on-demand water pressure when it was flushing the system with fresh. Well, guys and girls, here we are with the installed water maker. You can see there's my control panel, main pressure pump, pre-filters, and the membrane. The biggest issue I'm having is the lift pump configuration that I put in here, which is the, the lower pump there, and filter. It's just, it's below the water line as it should be, but this suction line obviously deviates above the water line, which creates an airlock when it's not in use or when you go to clean a filter. So I'm going to have to pull that off and reconfigure it. And the system works, all right? I'm making fresh water from salt water when we have pressurized the inlet system, like so there's no airlock. So I'm going to have to pull this apart, the lift pumps part of the configuration, and reconfigure the suction line lower down in the boat. So that at no point does it go above the water line. So a bit of a task, but um, such is the life of a boat owner. Right, so I've just disconnected that pump there. I'm going to um, heat this pipe with a with a paint gun, a heat gun, and just try and soften that plastic so I can get that nipple fitting off. And I'll have a look at how I can reconfigure this. All right, morning guys. So, getting back to the uh, salt water pump and the strainer. I had Dad on board and my friend Gordo next door giving me a hand a few days ago to reroute this suction line which used to be up here, which as we discovered was above the water line. It's a no-no. We had great difficulty putting this hose through um, lower down in the boat. I had to go underneath the fridge and then under a pantry and then through a bulkhead and a few places. So it was a real wrestle. <coughs> It's not a water maker. But it's now much lower. Uh, I can see water in this. And when I turn this pump on, it sucks water. So now is the time really to test the system. I just had it running briefly um, without the camera and it was making water. But um, I wanna make sure that I can turn it off and on without losing prime. So let's give it a go. So 
So I've got the generator going because uh, I want to be able to run the system as it should be running with the generator rather than using shore power. Let's see how it goes with the load of this motor starter. Okay, this pump on. And like all good projects, there was a lot of learning going on very quickly, as I was learning how to switch the unit on and off. So the um, Jenny is running the water maker right now and um, we're making about 60 to 70 litres an hour. So let's just see how how it goes. Wouldn't mind running it for an hour or so today and try and filling up the water tank with fresh water. The harbour water here is super clean today. It's an incoming tide. I think it'll be fine. And um, yeah, fill these tanks up with sweet water that's been made from salt. Alrighty, well that's my tank gauge and I'm um Nearly close to, I'm getting close to full. It's about 175 litres in there at the moment. Um, I'll fill her up to 200 and then I'll switch her off. And here we go, the big test. There's some water. Wow, that's, um, that's better than town water. It doesn't have any chlorinated taste. It, it tastes exactly like rainwater. Uh, there's no no odor and it's super clear so I think we're winning finally and a huge thanks to Lou for your help and camera work <laughs> cheers <laughs> Dad here. yeah thanks so. it's a bit more even, makes sense. and as always a huge thanks to you for your support Long